Hi, this is Chuck King. Today we're in beautiful Wallace, Idaho at the Oasis Bordello Museum. On today's episode of The King's Guide, we're introducing you to Dr. Heather Brandstetter. I'm Heather Brandstetter and I wrote the book Selling Sex in the Silver Valley, A Business Doing Pleasure. It's about the history of sex work in the Silver Valley and especially Wallace, Idaho from 1884 till 1991. Heather was born and raised in the Silver Valley. In 2012, she earned her PhD from the University of North Carolina in Rhetoric and Cultural Studies. One thing that I really wanted to convey with the book was how much these women meant. These women were giving back to our community and they were part of our community and yet we didn't really have any information about them. Heather wanted to preserve the Silver Valley's colorful history before everyone who was alive to tell about it was gone. I interviewed 99 people for the project. The information that I took down in oral histories would have died with people as they died and people did die. After I would interview them, they would die. And, and I was like, good thing I got that down, you know, because otherwise we wouldn't even know. It's hard to believe, but the brothels in Wallace were still operating until the early 1990s. For people who grew up outside an Old West mining town, the moral attitude might seem a little strange. Almost every person who I talked to during my oral histories told me the houses offered relief for single miners and kept local women from getting raped. They also said things like, the women were checked out by doctors and didn't solicit around town or on the streets. And especially, people emphasized how much the houses gave back to the community. So an article appearing in Boise's Idaho Statement in the, in the mid-1980s uh, features one of the town's female residents saying, a mining town needs brothels. And it quotes the manager of the UNI Rooms promoting this understanding of justice congruent with the town's historic mining camp roots. She says, you don't have to obey the laws, but you do have to follow the rules. That is still the attitude. It's a very libertarian, uh, live and let live kind of uh, mentality. One of the most famous madams, Ginger Murphy, ran the Oasis from 1963 to 1988. So this was Ginger's room, and from here she could spy on the girls using this, uh, oh, over here. <laughs> from here she could spy on the girls using this intercom system. Uh, she could listen to everything that was going on in all the rooms and try and make sure that they were being safe. So this is the price list. Uh, it started at $15 for an eight minute minimum. Um, and then it went all the way up to a bubble bath for an hour, which was the, one of the more elaborate services. And some wigs. Apparently Ginger liked her Atari. Um, Ginger was a, a bit of a recluse as she got older in age and just kind of hung out here in her uh, very expensive silk pajamas and played Atari <laughs> when, in her free time. Not everyone who grew up in Wallace felt the live and let live motto was healthy. And Heather documents their stories in her book as well. So I had a lot of difficulty finding anyone who would say anything negative about the sex work industry in Wallace. Uh, Holly Shoemaker, I thought was really brave to tell her story. Um, she talked about her experience uh, in high school during the early 1960s. And she said, Sex work affected my marriage and degraded my ex-husband who taught me things based on what he'd been taught up there. It would be a mistake to glorify the madams in any way, Shoemaker cautioned me, because their profession was, quote, based on lies. Prostitution is a lie and it erodes the soul. It destroys something meant to unite people. Shoemaker added that her dad had, quote, tried to make me feel better because he was a city councilman. Whores built the viaduct, he said which was true. The whores did give the money to build a viaduct. Even though most women in town believed the sex industry was in their interest to promote, some women, like Shoemaker, felt a tension under the surface because it was, quote, like a secret club in this town between the men and the women in the houses. But the other women in Wallace weren't allowed into this boys club. Some men from the region presumed most women in town were sex workers and were blatantly disrespectful when a Wallace girl revealed where she was from. 
and I experienced this actually when I was going to college. Um, I'd walk into a party and people would be like, oh, Wallace girl, hey, you know, it would be kind of like this big joke, like obviously, um, you know, I was a working girl and or easy because um, I was from Wallace and you know this was years after they'd already stopped but um, but there was still the Wallace reputation so Shoemaker related this story about high school cheerleaders participating in a Spokane parade and I also heard this story firsthand from one of the cheerleaders who was marching in the parade Wallace girls marched in their black sweaters with the large W for Wallace across their chests coins were tossed at them and jeers of W for whore rang out at this point, I had come to believe I would rather be a madam or a whore than one of the, quote, protected women of Wallace. One of the girls went home and recounted this story to her mom, who told her never again to speak a bad word about those women because they protected young girls from being raped and supported the community economically, including their own family's business. Her mother had said, and you'll find the same thing in any town. It's just that it's out in the open here and it's not some kind of corrupt uh, back channel dealing. Instead, it's very upfront and we just admit to it instead of hiding it as a secret. If you'd like to learn more about the fascinating history of the brothels of the Silver Valley, you can find Heather Brandstetter's book, Selling Sex in the Silver Valley, online at abusinessdoingpleasure.com. I'm Chuck King. See you next time on The King's Guide. If you like today's goodies on Spokane history, make sure you subscribe to Nostalgia Magazine. You'll find even more goodies in every issue. Ageless stories, ageless photos. That's Nostalgia Magazine. I like cake. So, am I allowed to cuss? No mistake. <laughs> Baby, if you insist. <laughs> One joke that people related like versions candy, of over and over went sake. along the lines Baby, of this. Um, bar owners who had businesses beneath the houses would say something I like, like business is great, but there's too I much overhead. <laughs> Just get a so there was one time when the houses had it, went through a temporary like shutdown in 1973, down. and they put signs Baby, up that said, we're closed, beat it. <laughs> Our history is our identity, you know, our history is a part of who we are as people and if we don't record how our values formed and were created, you know, we're going to lose that and that's, a sh and that's a shame, I mean, that's kind of what nostalgia is all about, right, I mean, it's like you want to preserve your memories um, before, they're, before they're gone and, and, um, and I think that Anyway, that was, that was part of what I was trying to do with this book, was record for outsiders to Wallace um, how we came to have our social and cultural values. Uh, so